In this video, I will be showing you how to set up a Sega Saturn emulator called Ymir. Okay, let's head on over to the official GitHub page, which I will leave in a pinned comment. The latest version of this emulator as the recording of this video is 0.2.0. Once you are here, you're going to want to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and you will find assets. These are your download links. Now this emulator is available for Linux, Mac and Windows. I'm using Windows, so I'm going to download Windows x86 and you notice there is two of them. You have SSE2 and AVX2. Now, if you have a really old Windows computer, then you want to select the SSE2. But if you are using a Windows computer that was built within the last 15 years, then select this option here, the AVX2. Once you click on it, your download will start. Also, we are going to need a program to extract files. I personally prefer to use 7-Zip, but if you want to use your built-in Windows extractor, then that's fine. But if you want 7-Zip, the link will be in the description. So I have moved my emulator file here on my desktop. You guys can save it wherever you like, whether that be an SSD, external SSD, external hard drive, it's up to you. Also here on my desktop, I have a folder called Saturn Games. And inside of that folder, I have a few ROMs. And if you check out the type, these are CHD files, which are playable in the emulator. Ymir also accepts .ccd, .q, .mds, and .iso files. Now for our emulator file, we will need to extract it. Now before we extract this, make sure you have this file saved in the location you want it to stay. I'll show you why that's important in a minute. Let's go ahead and right click on the file. If you want to use the Windows built-in extractor, then you can select the extract all. But since I'm going to be using 7-Zip, I'm going to come down here to show more options. 7-Zip and extract to Ymir. That's going to create a new folder containing my extracted files. I no longer need the zip folder, so we can go ahead and right click and delete it. Now let's open that new folder. And here's our emulator. Now you will get this pop up when you run this emulator for the first time. And right here it says installed users home directory, which is my C drive for you. This should also say your C drive and for a portable current working directory. For me, it also says C drive, but this is why I told you guys, make sure you are extracting this file in a place you want to keep it. For me, it says C drive because I extracted it on my desktop. But for you, if you have this installed on an external SSD, external hard drive, it will be showing that drive. So always make sure you select portable. Now, when you first open the emulator, you will get this welcome to your mirror pop up. And the first thing you will notice is that it says Ymir requires a valid BIOS ROM to work. Now, just like ROMs, I cannot tell you where to find a working BIOS here on YouTube, but trust me, they are not hard to find. Just do a Google search, Saturn ROMs, Saturn BIOS, and you will be able to find all the files you need. If you are still having trouble, then check out my Patreon page, link in the description, and I will have some videos there that can help you out. So when you do find a working BIOS file, that BIOS file will need to be extracted. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and use 7-Zip to extract this file. Here's my new folder containing my extracted files. We no longer need the zip folder, so we can go ahead and delete that. And inside of your BIOS folder, this is a all regions BIOS, and these are the files you should see. Now back over on the emulator, to install this BIOS, we're going to go to open IPL ROMs directory. This is going to open the folder of where you need to place your BIOS file. So I'm just going to highlight all of my BIOS files that I extracted and I'm just going to drag them into this spot. And as you notice behind the folder, the emulator read the BIOS file. The next pop-up you're going to get is an automatic update checks. So if you want the emulator to check for updates on startup, then check this box. And if you want to update to the nightly bills, check this box. I prefer both. Accept. At this point, go ahead and connect the controller to your PC because you cannot move forward with keyboard and mouse. Now I have tested an Xbox One, Xbox Series, a PlayStation 5 controller. They all work with this emulator. The controller I am using is an Xbox Series controller. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and select English and exit. You can set your clock. Most likely will already be accurate. Now at this point, we could simply go ahead and load up a game. We don't have to map out our controller. The emulator has already mapped that out for you. We don't have to change anything in the settings because this emulator is super easy to run. Any modern Intel, AMD, or Apple Silicon M1 to M4 chip will run this emulator no problem. You only need a minimum of four gigabytes of RAM, Integrated graphics can run this, so if you have any graphics card, this will run no problem. Now the only thing I don't like is that you can't upgrade the graphics, and I'm hoping this is a feature they will add in the future. But I will admit this emulator does run Saturn games pretty well. To load a game, you want to come up here to file, load this image, Go ahead and locate wherever you have your games. In my case, in that folder on my desktop, Saturn Games. Select the game you want to open. And then down here, you want to select Start Application. And that game should load up. Now, if you want to go full screen, then you want to come up here to settings, go down to video and select full screen. And this will automatically put you into full screen. Now, like I said, we can't upscale the graphics, but we can make them look a little bit sharper by turning on force integer scaling. Now, one thing I like to do with all of my retro games is play them in a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. If you want to do this, then go ahead and click right here, 16 to 9, and this will make your game full screen. Now, it will make your game look a little stretched, but if you're fine with that, then leave it on. If not, then turn it back to 4 to 3. Also, we do have some hotkeys, so if you want to see your hotkeys, then come over here, click on hotkeys and you can check these out and change them if you want to. And one last thing I wanna show you guys, come up here to emulation, and we're gonna turn on rewind buffer. This will give you the ability to rewind your game. Now go ahead and press the F8 key, and you should see at the top left of your screen, rewind buffer enabled. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get into battle, and to reverse, I'm gonna press the back key. Now when I press back, you'll see the bar at the bottom of the screen moving as well, and you'll see everything in reverse. And when I want to get back in the game, I just let go of it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope the video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like. And if you need any additional help with anything, then check out my Patreon page. I have some videos there that can help you out.